let's talk about the summer. And I'm going to give you some news because this has been much more of a... I've enjoyed this, man. It feels therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but there's also been news. Now, I can't really confirm this myself. I haven't seen it. But there were a lot of people tweeting that David Ornstein um, was on some broadcast coverage. And he was saying, Arsenal are looking for a six and an eight. Casado and Rice are the targets for the six. Mm -hmm. And Kudus and Mount are the targets for the eight. Now, we know Arsenal need midfielders. Elneny, knee injury, 30 plus. Xhaka, 30 plus. Partey has injuries, although he's not been as injury prone this year, to be fair. 30 plus. Jorginho, 30 plus on a short term contract. Um, the players linked, I think, are very interesting. You talked earlier about the, the, the pull we have now. Yeah. Now, Declan Rice is a fascinating one because I've seen people in the media more than ever speaking quite candidly about where they think Rice is going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's true, yeah. And a lot of people, former Arsenal players, some of them, have said, you know, Rice and Arte. There's something on The Athletic, or was it, or was it on their podcast, saying why, Art, um, why Arsenal and Rice are perfect for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that's quite a... You kind of put that out there when a signing's nearly done. You heard... Um, I don't know if you heard Jamie Carragher. You wouldn't have because you're on the watch wrong. Jamie Carragher on commentary for the West Ham game, someone said, you know, they're linked with midfielders, Declan Rice, and the commentator goes, is that just a rumour? And Carragher goes, I think it's a little more than a rumour. And there's been a lot of things where Neville has said it looks like he might be going, mm -hmm. you know, the, the strong links with Arsenal. There are a lot of people who I would expect to know things who are speaking very openly about the idea of or, or prospects of Rice going to Arsenal. Yeah. Now, we also know people, not like sources, or just friends of ours who are very confident he's not going there. So, mm -hmm. okay, we'll see. But that is the kind of player that I didn't think we could attract two years ago. I think You'd be he right. could be an elite midfielder. I think he could be looked back on as an elite midfielder when his career comes to an end. And I don't think a year ago we would have been in for a Declan Rice. Excited we, about that? We link? couldn't be in for a Declan no, Rice. Yeah, right. yeah, we couldn't. Right. Um, am I excited about the link? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about Casado too. Um, yeah. You just said it's Casado or Rice, whereas in January it's, when we were making bids for Casado, the, the, there was a report out from one of these top journalists saying that if we bought Casado, it wouldn't impact going for Rice in the summer, which is kind of confusing to me. But then maybe Jorginho coming in and having another year plays a part in that. If you ask me which one I'd prefer, I've seen more of Rice, but I like Casado's profile a bit more. But equally, I think both would be top additions, whichever one it is, to the team. And Could obviously, Rice is young, he's English, he'll fit in with this core, but Casado is young himself. So I'm, I'm happy with both, with either option. It could be smart from Arsenal because the last thing you want um, West Ham and Brighton thinking is that you've got 150 million to spend on two 75 million pound signings. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe if you're in a position where you're speaking to, you know, West Ham about Declan Rice, and they're going, we want 85 million. You go, listen, Brighton only asking for 65. Mm -hmm. So I mean, what are you doing? You yeah. know, like you yeah, almost yeah. want to keep you want to keep the narrative going in that sense. Yeah. Who would you prefer? Declan Rice because I can see him starting with Partey. Okay. If if it's like not not as two sixes, but like maybe doing what Jack has been doing, getting forward box to box. But does Rice off? Does Rice really offer an improvement in the final third? <sighs> okay, so that's my problem I don't with him in the six. I mean, in the eight. Sorry, I don't think he's got Jacker's delivery. But I think he's better on the ball than people give him credit for. Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah, I'll he's give a him bit that, more yeah. of a bulldozer, I think. You know, like when you whip a ball to the back post or you're pressing up the pitch and you need to win it back. I think he's just, like for that first line of defence and that first line of physicality you need, I think he can offer a lot there. Yeah. Um, Caicedo, I think, is unbelievably neat, man. I watched him in the FA Cup semi-final. Oh, just press resistant, turn, touches in the right areas, calm wins his jewels um but but i could he be an eight i'm not i don't know maybe i don't think he is yeah I'd, i think more six for sure with him yeah so and i'll throw one more thing i like about declan rice and this is for like emergency situations but the fact he can play as a center back now i'm not saying uh because he should be a backup to to saliba or anything 
you know, he gets injured and suddenly we drop him in. I mean more that imagine you're chasing a game and actually you still want your best headers of the ball, mm -hmm. your, your leaders, but you need that versatility. And sometimes you might go, listen, Saliba, White, whoever, you come off, Declan, you just drop back. City have done it before with Rodri and other players where it's just, I need my best ball players and my experience in the back four. And I, and, and I just think he, he can offer something different there. But I, I love them both. Get and Rice both. has played centre-back, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, there's versatility there. Um, yeah, that would be a big, big pull considering what's happened at the end of both this seasons. That's what I mean. Now. Rice is a better centre-back than Holding, says David Luma. Ben White injury last year, Saliba injury this year. Right. Similar stories. Holding comes in, gets exposed. And... Good night, top four. Good night, Premier League title. So yeah, that you know what? Like I said, I'd take either. I'd take either Rice or Casado. The, the other position you said Mount yeah. or Kudus, but isn't Kudus more a right winger? I think so. When he came through, I think he was like a or a ten creative like slash box to box. Um, lo I think he's very versatile, can play in lots of positions, and he's also played as a false nine for Ajax. I think at Liverpool he scored at Anfield playing. As basically the, the, the mm -hmm. furthest forward, um, but you know Arteta has reinvented so many players' roles and positions, True. and I can see why he's got the dynamism and the kind of flair that Arteta would want in his midfield. But I am sort of, and it was never my favorite type of um, favorite type of player. The kind of the six foot two technicians. I always liked my David Silvers, my Cazorla's, Fabregas, all mm -hmm. those kind of players. But I definitely think with what Klopp's done with his teams and now the direction City are going with with Gundogan, Rodri, De Bruyne. They're all big guys, you know. I know they they can play, but they're yeah. all they all got they're stocky. They've got presence. I do think like we're going to need to start going into some games with Rice and Partey, you know, or Rice and Jacker, or Partey and Jacker. Like you know, having just I think that's been part of Arsenal's success is that actually if you want to score against Arsenal. This is, you know, from February onwards, it got easier. But before then, it was, can you get through Ramsdale, who commands his area fairly well, Saliba, Gabriel, Partey, Xhaka. That's yeah, quite... Yeah. And even Jesus throws his body around. Yeah, and even yeah. Erdogan gets stuck in, but he's not the biggest. You know, like, I, I think we're going to need to have that element. So maybe that's why he likes Mason Mount, because he works really hard. He's not exactly the biggest, but his work rate, I don't think anyone can question, even if you question his quality a little bit I think it should be Mount and Kudus if, if that is the if that is the interested targets because I think Kudus had some competition for Saka as well mm. um, can take Saka at the firing line when need be mm -hmm. um, and Mount can operate in that in that eight role obviously there's also there's also other positions that we need to look at so let's talk about them so with what's happened to with Rob Holding how do you address that Sell him and buy someone. Centre back. Yeah. So or, is is White a long term right back for you now? For me, for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. Um, White, regardless of what happened yesterday, I still think he's been the best right back in the league this season. So, yeah. how, why would you change that? Why you know, would you? again, and maybe I'm doing a little kind of. Okay, so that centre back position, right? Mm. We can either just go and do what we've done with Kivio, buy a £20 million uh, centre-back who fits the profile and has high potential. I'd love that. Cool. But I sort of think when you look at the profiles of the back four we have, I still think White can be the third centre-back to Saliba. He can be starting right back and then with a Saliba injury, he can play centre-back. Yeah. I still think there's a player in Tomiyasu. Injuries are a problem, but I really think he can still be very dependable as a right back cover as a right. left back cover a and a center back cover i want to stress i think he could play there that i'd almost go for a right back and then you still got the declan rice thing like i said he can slot in like I, th I think we can address it in like three or four other ways yeah yeah but and i would get a right back who is more a natural inverter like zinchenko who is maybe i know white's done really well overlapping but like you know, obviously we'd never get Reese James, but imagine we had that outlet. Is it, is it, I saw something about Fresneda. Fresneda. Yeah, yeah I don't know how good he is, but... Very young, but from what I read of him, he's someone who... Very Excellent good on, on the, the ball, ball apparently. Yeah, yeah he, he, he can float into the midfield as well. So if we was to do something like that, then I'd say, all right, that we've kind of re replaced Holden internally by 
adding depth to the right back position. So if need be, Ben White slots in as a centre back. And you got Brook Norton Cuffy coming. You got Rules uh, Rule Walters. I don't know how Norton Cuffy's loans have gone recently, but he was brilliant before. Uh, Rule Walters, everyone knows Arteta rates him, and there's a future for him. We think so. That makes you think internally. We've actually got so much depth at right back that White. Look, I know this is. I know we like to talk about White as the most improved player this year. A lot of people do, and I hear that for me, Xhaka. Uh, but because I, I, I thought yeah. White was good last year. Yeah, yeah. I actually think across the season, yes, there were some bad days, but largely I thought he did well for us. I yeah, really yeah. did. Xhaka's definitely the most improved for me. Mm. Yeah. But like, like I said, if that if the option is to bring in another player into the right back role and that frees up Ben White in case of an injury to Saliba to slot in. To the to the centre back. Don't forget, Tommy Asu can do that too. Then then I'd be I'd be all right with that. I'd be all right with that. So th- there's there's a couple of different options we can we can look at to fix that that issue in defence. But for God's sake, now in my opinion, just sell Rob Holding. Just just do it now. Sell, l- release whatever it needs to be. Just do it because <laughs> yeah, really. it, it's just remnants of time gone past where you know I don't think it's good enough. I mean. I'm not. I'm not blaming Rob Holding for the collapse because it's it's it's, it's bigger than just Rob Holding. Mm. But he, you know, a lot of people have praised him because he's happy to be on the bench. Of course, he's happy to be on the bench at Arsenal Football Club. But sometimes that that that, that can be a negative as well because is there motivation there to really step up and challenge and become a focal point? Or are you just happy to sit there and play your part when called upon and wink when you score a goal three 0 down? No, like, it wasn't uh, great. Yeah. yeah, I don't like that. So it's it's no. time now to 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 move on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say sell Eddie as well. I know I'm moving into another position. Yeah, well, I, I was going to bring up the striker. I'd on say it. sell Eddie as well. I think is that because you think his stock is higher than ever before? I don't even know about that because I mean he came in January, he scored a few goals, and then it dried up, and we needed to bring Trossard into the into this position, and then ever since then, Enketia hasn't really got a sniff at it again. So. Is his stock high? I don't really think so. I mean, I think we could have sold Eddie maybe three, three and a, three years ago. I think it was for about fifteen mil. I think, I think West Ham. I think were interested at the time. Maybe was Crystal Palace interested? I think a couple clubs were interested. I think fifteen mil. I still think it's probably around fifteen mil. Hmm. So this Balogun as well. Um, you know, I, I'm so, I, this is where I will hold my hands up and say I'm being a flip-flop. I always thought the way we play, I didn't understand how you could bring in a, you know, a Haaland type. A, obviously, a player as good as Haaland, obviously, but I'm, I'm talking profile-wise. The six foot three, six foot four, kind of physical presence that can dominate. I thought we don't do that. Like we don't do that. What? How? I don't know why we benefit from it. But you've been calling for it since last summer. A lot of people have. Rory did too on his fan cam yesterday. And yeah, I've I've got there now. Where I'm sort of like, no, I get it. Especially when you've got players like Jesus who can play out wide. You don't have to feel like Jesus automatically loses his play, place in the team yeah, yeah. just because you bring in an Ivan Tony. A I think you mentioned uh, Ho- Hojland. Is that the the young oh, the, yeah, yeah. Atalanta? I think um, or. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, you throw, na- throw, throw names out there for kind of physical number nines that I talked about. Did I say Ivan Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mikhail Kaufman? I don't know. But yeah, get, throw throw some names out, comment section. Um, I sort of see it now. I sort of see like why it is important, not just as someone to bring off the bench for the last 20 minutes, just actually as another way to approach games. Yeah. A bigger threat, in, a bigger threat for the opposition. Yeah. I think Jesus bring so much different qualities to the side but I don't think opposition are scared of him as a threat goal scoring threat yeah and I think we need a goal scoring threat look I see a name popping up Osman I'd love Osman I, I, I just mm-hmm. Vlavic is up there Mitrovic Vlavic some there. people are saying I wouldn't go Mitrovic person Evan Ferguson I've got to say he does look absolutely brilliant but I don't see Oscar he does look good still but it's another, it's, it, it, it'd be another very very young player that would have to wait yeah quite a while mm-hmm. um, to develop in in order to Troy Deeney, all he says, yeah, bring bring Deeney in. <laughs> uh, Sesco, but he's just he's only just joined Leipzig, I think, hasn't he? Um, yeah, I I um, I think we need something like that up front now. Yeah. So all in all, what have we discussed? We've discussed two midfielders, eight and a six. Mm-hmm. I, I've mentioned the the right wing position um, and some competition depth for Saka. We've talked about 
centre back maybe being fixed by adding another right back and we've mentioned striker so that's already five positions we've covered and I think that's the that's why I, again I put Kronke in the thumbnail because it's over to these men now now we've got Champions League money yes we've spent a hundred and if you split it it's about 125 130 mil a season since Arteta's come in and that's without Champions League football so with it two 250 that's what I'm looking at this summer wow okay uh, so let's say that uh, listen say we want Mason Mount it ain't coming cheap so that's going to be a 50 60 million pound but even even though he's only got a year left unfortunately it's going to be about that much Declan Rice you're looking at 70 million minimum and they're probably West Ham fans watching this going lol 100 please <laughs> um, and then you're talking to right back maybe you get one in for 2030 so what are we on there we're on about 150 50, 60 million already. Um, and if Mount's going to cost that much, I mean, I like Mount, but I'm not, I, I no, don't like I it, it that much. But but then actually another 70 million pound striker and you're, you're within your 250 million pound budget. So and don't stop there, Kronke. If, if, if you've got more, if we can spend more with all this FFP stuff and all that, which year in, year out, it just seems to get more laughable when you look at what Chelsea are doing with their money, then then do it. I know, I know other fans might be listening to this going, you lot are so spoiled. Look at the money you want spent. Look what's already been spent. Look at the team. But my thing is, yeah, we're competing with Man City. Yeah. Just to remind you about that big event live with an audience. And if you want to be in the audience, click the link in the description and get involved. Tickets selling fast for that event on the 23rd of May at the Islington Assembly Hall right here in North London. We're going to have loads of guests on the day as well. Talking about the Arsenal, you do not want to miss it, right? This podcast is a very special one. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll be giving away a couple of tickets to it as well. But if you want to join us, get your tickets. They are selling fast. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.